not the beast! Not the beast! Ah! Out of my eyes! Hello and welcome back to the Concept Checkup. The point of Concept Checkup is to dive into the Warframe forums, look for a community-made Warframe concept, and talk about it. For the purpose of Concept Checkup, I will use my custom-built evaluating method known as, ASS. Without further ado, let's begin the checkup. For today's checkup we have Hexa, the Hornet Warframe. Hexa was created by Vakai Taki on the Warframe forums, and is unique because Hexa comes with two Cyandanas, each of which changes her abilities. The Mother of Swarm Cyandana is Hexa's standard one, which gives her the Queen set of abilities. The Sting Cyandana can be dropped from Eximus units like Oberon parts, and it gives Hexa the Huntress set of abilities. Both the Mother of Swarm and Sting Cyandanas are exclusive to Hexa alone, so to any of you that are hardcore fashion frame people, tough luck. With high health, average shields and armor, and a low energy capacity, Hexa is clearly not a squishy frame as you'd think it be is. Let's start with the Mother of Swarm Cyandana, which gives Hexa the Queen abilities, which are defensive. With the Queen group of abilities, Hexa's passive is Hornet Swarm. Any allies that have hornets on them take less damage and become immune to elemental damage. This might sound a bit weird and or specific, and it is, because it functions with one of Hex's abilities, which I will get into later. Hex's first queen ability is Hive. Hex throws out a hive, which will remain where it was thrown, much like Voban's Tesla. However, the hive will spawn hornets that will attack any enemies that come within range, dealing corrosive damage. Lastly, any enemy that comes within Hive's range will cause Hive's health to slowly decrease over time. Hive is essentially the multi-target version of Tesla, but instead of being charge-based, it's health-based. The only gripe I have with Hive however, is that the health is absurdly low. With 50 health, Hive would literally be useless outside of level 10 areas. Hex's second queen ability is Bastion. Hexa creates a wall of hornets preventing enemies and bullets from passing through, but allowing allies to pass through and fire through. Bastion's health is low, but it regenerates over time. Again, Bastion suffers from low health much like Hive. The regenerative barricade sounds really appealing to use to permanently block off an area to enemies, but the low health sets it back. Hex's third queen ability is Collector. Hexa can target an ally and cover them in a living shield of hornets. The Hornets will attack any nearby enemy and leech off their health and shields, increasing their ally host's health and shields. Going back to Hex's Hornet Swarm passive, Collector basically turns any ally into a walking tank, completely immune to elemental procs and capable of damaging anything that gets too close. Needless to say, Collector's protect an ally idea is great, as it would make Queen Hex a unique teammate defender frame. However, the elemental immunity is a bit too much, and considering that Collector is a shield of Hornets, it would make sense to remove the elemental immunity. Hex's fourth queen ability is Empire. Kind of like in Arrows' Scarab Swarm, Hexa sends out Hornets to destroy everything in a target area, dealing corrosive and toxin damage. Empire is health-based rather than duration-based, and it suffers from the same health drain drawback as Hive. It seems that despite being a defensive setup, the Queen set of Hex's abilities suffers from low health, which would make Hexa pointless in high-level missions. Due to that, the first thing for Hexa that has to be fixed is the disturbingly low amounts of health. Now for Hexa's Sting Cyandana, which gives her the offensive Huntress set of abilities. Hexa's Huntress passive is Hunting Season. All teammates in Hexa's squad gain a movement speed and damage buff. This passive is one of the more straightforward ones I've seen, which is a good and bad thing. On one hand, the additional damage and speed is always of use, but on the other, it's a really basic passive. Something else unique could have taken its place, but instead Hexa has a buff passive. I mean, it's useful, but it could have been something else. Hexa's first Huntress ability is Wings. Hexa grows wings on her back, allowing her to fly. However, Hexa's wings are health-based, and drain depending on how far Hexa travels. The drain rate on wings is unknown, 
so for now it's impossible to say whether or not Wings needs a health buff like Empire and Hive. What I find curious is that Hexa has the ability to fly, meanwhile Zephyr can't do that, despite being the air elemental warframe. Hexa's second Huntress ability is Sting Strike. Hexa readies her stinger and attacks target enemy, dealing toxin and puncture damage. The stinger is able to hit more than one enemy, allowing for multi-target capability. Getting a high power strength on Hexa can let her deal big amounts of damage, as well as deliver toxin and puncture procs, to multiple enemies. Sting Strike could make a good second ability, if the exact numbers were known. Hexa's third Huntress ability is Swarm Wave. Hexa commands a legion of hornets, dealing corrosive damage in a target area. Despite being nearly the same as Hexa's Empire ability, Swarm Wave is not health based, making it easier to use. If enemies in Swarm Wave become panicked when being attacked by the hornets, Swarm Wave could make a useful lockdown ability. Hexa's fourth Huntress ability is Flying Death. Upon activation, Hexa flies to the target enemy and attacks them with her stinger, then flies to the next nearby enemy and stings them as well. Hexa can sting up to 5 total enemies with flying death, and each successive sting deals more damage than the last. The stinger deals toxin and puncture damage, and enemies killed by the stinger drop health orbs. Flying death can be seen as the miniature version of Ash's Blade Storm. Except that Flying Death deals elemental damage and is capable of healing via dropped health orbs. Needless to say, both offensive and defensive style players can find use in Hexa, with her varied but useful set of abilities. Hexa's main problem is the low health on her queen set of abilities, which makes them worthless in high level areas. If this doesn't get fixed, then only Hexa's Huntress abilities will be viable, as they do not have health. With that in mind, here are Hexa's scores. A choice between an offensive or defensive style for a Warframe seems like a breath of fresh air, much like how Chroma's abilities change depending on the color given to his energy. However, before Hexa can truly be considered to be put into the game, her Queen abilities have to be heavily buffed to be on par with her Huntress abilities. Without those buffs, half of Hexa would be rendered obsolete. For my personal thoughts, I find Hexa's Hornet design to be an interesting one, namely because I find animal-based warframes to be both intriguing and unique, if not weird. I have said it multiple times already, but I will say it again for good measure. In order for Hexa to see play in high-level missions, she absolutely must gain buffs to her defensive abilities. So that's Hexa's checkup. Tune in next time where I will perform a concept checkup on Qantas. Thank you for watching.